Right, so I got a special guest turning up in two days' time, so I thought we'd better just do a quick tidy up. Uh, obviously, Ben's coming over on the weekend, and I thought, right, better give this green a bit of a haircut. We're going to plug out some of the uh, section of the green today, so it's time to plug out the area with some Tiff Dwarf Cooch. And then finally, we'll go back around, have a little update on that Buffalo Scout from last week's episode. Now, that's raised a few questions with everybody, and I've done, I'm going to do a question and answer. So I've plucked out all the questions that I got throughout the week and we're going to go back around there after this and we'll go through, have a little look, see how it's updating. It's coming along pretty well. I had a little drive-by the other day. Um, anyway, let's crack on with it all. I remember the day when we started talking. We were kids and I knocked down all of your marbles, but you did not seem to mind at all. Took our bikes to the lake after school each day And skipped many stones from the beach And one thing you said was listen We're getting plenty off it, so uh, perfect time to stay at renovations this weekend. Righto, so it's time for a little update on what's been happening with our little patch here that we're going to change out to the Tiff Dwarf variety. Now, a couple of people have been getting a little bit confused with the Tiff Tough and the Tiff Dwarf. Now, um, the Tiff Tough and Tiff Dwarf are not directly related as such. They come from the same place. So the Tiff bit comes from Tifton, Georgia. So the, I guess the university or the uh, research center that breeds this stuff uh, throws the Tiff in front of the name. So Tiff Tuff, it's a tough variety. Tiff Dwarf is a dwarf variety. So yeah, this is a different grass to the uh, the Tiff Tuff. So just sort of putting that out there as well. Now, we did get, um, you won't see it from back there, but we did get a little tiny bit um, of Santa Ana push back through. I give it a second hit with Roundup and uh, I haven't seen any else come through. So I'm fairly confident now that we can uh, start using the this Pro plugging tool here and uh, start planning out this section. So I've had a bit of a think about this and I think I'll start a uh, meter square in the middle of this patch and that way it gives it a chance to spread out either side as well um, there's no there's no benefit to to plugging right along the corners because it's got no really nowhere too far to travel and before you know it i'm going to be edging it so i'd rather start it in the middle and let it run itself um, it's going to give me the best bang for buck i feel so I'm going to work out, I'm just going to mark this out somehow so I can work out to get an even amount of cores in here, uh, or plugs if you want to call them, uh, before we before we start off. Because I just want to try and get a bit of a, a strategy or a, or a uniform approach to this because we've got a, down the track we've got a long way to go. Okay, so I had a little think about it off camera because I was like, mm, how do I, how am I going to do this? So basically what I ended up doing, I found four um, of those micro sprinkler stakes, those little misting stakes, or whatever you use on the gardens. And I basically just did a foot by foot. So foot in that way, foot in that way. So circa 30 centimeters all the way around. So, well, at least there'll be four plugs at least, and then we'll fill rows in along there. Gives me two options here or two benefits. Number one, it gives me the opportunity to keep back the Santa Ana from the new area on both sides. And as it spreads, I can kill a bit more out this way kill a bit more out that way and um, I can keep it closer on the middle there so that's the thought process behind how I've lined it all up right yeah so we're going to need uh, 25 plugs I've worked out and uh, that should give us a pretty reasonable coverage. I just hope I can get uh, 25 plugs out of my little my little uh, sections of Tiff Tough of Tiff Dwarf that I've got remaining. Right, oh, you can see there our first cores coming out the top. So all these core holes through here, 
So those 10 core holes have all stored in this here. And that was the first one that's reached the surface right there. So we're going to tip those out. We'll do some more and then we'll uh, start plugging in some new ones. Keep thinking that I could have done something, but now I'm left with an empty heart. No making amends, no waking up beside you and holding you till we forget it all. So I guess now the uh, we might just chuck a tiny little bit of sand over the actual cores just so it falls in the around the, the holes a little tiny bit. Right, well let's go around now and have a look at our buffalo. It's actually 10 days today since we scarified, oh, scalped, shaved, renovated this buffalo lawn. And as I said at the time when I did this, it was always gonna be a slow recovery, but it gets some green shoots pretty quick. And you've just seen a little bit of a little bit of footage there and it's proven me to be, to be right. So I'm pretty comfortable with how it's all looking. There's obviously some pretty bare areas around the joint, but as I said, as the weeks roll by, it'll come more and more uh, covered over greener, healthier. Now this lawn still won't get mown for a while because we're going to reset the height up fairly high and the reason is I'm going to try and get this stuff, this grass to this time start growing a little bit more upright rather than running across the surface and I've been able to do that at home with the sapphire buffalo so let's just see if I can do it here with this Sir Walter because I just sort of get the feeling that the sapphire by nature might be a little bit more upright uh, whereas this, this Sir Walter is probably a little bit more um, horizontal so to speak. Now, the other thing that came from last week's video was there's a heap of questions and some really, really good questions. So I actually printed them all out and I just sort of go through them all with you guys now so I can give some better, better answers because as I said, typing on a keyboard, I can type, type, type and think, have I really answered that the way I want to answer it, etc. So anyway, so let's just start off with those and um, yeah, we'll wrap it up at the end of this. So Rayco 69 now, do I recommend the same procedure for Empire Zoysia lawn or only buffalo? Uh, also, I'm amazed how low you went and how much clippings there were from the small area. What was your reasoning behind the choice of starter fertilizer and what is the MPK ratings? Okay, so first of all, let's start with the fertilizer thing. So the fertilizer we used was the 2-spec Accelerate, which is actually not an establishment fertilizer. So 2-spec um, do one called Establish and it has a very even NPK ratio. So it is 15 
uh, 10 and 10. So 15 nitrogen, um, 15 for, um, sorry, 10 for phosphorus and potassium, 10 as well. The one we use which accelerates, I think of accelerate as a little bit more of a Red Bull fertilizer, so Red Bull or uh, Red Cordial, uh, quick shot and then it's done. So it's 30 for nitrogen, so a lot, pushing a lot of leaf growth, a lot of action upstairs, uh, only one for phosphorus and six for, uh, for potassium. Now, with the, with the zoysia, let me just start by saying I have very minimal, none to be fair, none of personal zoysia exposure, but I know a little bit, and I did actually run this question by Ben Sims as well, because he's done a little bit more with zoysia than I have, but hopefully in the future I can change it. Think of zoysia a little bit like a slow growing cooch, so treat it exactly along those lines. So you absolutely get it down, shave it down, scarify it down, it runs stolons and rhizons, so beneath the surface, above the surface. Um, so definitely, um, do that to it. It's just very slow and repairing, probably a little bit similar to what this is here. So absolutely, for Zoysia Empire, absolutely, it'll love it. It'll just take a little while to recover, but don't worry that it will. Woodsy W. Uh, your Renos look like you're annihilating the turf or you're still cool, calm and collected and make it sound simple like, oh, that's about there all is to it attitude. I'd be absolutely crapping myself to chomp my Sir Walter up like that. One thing that was not mentioned in your video, because you are real low and there's been a lot of bare dirt patches, what would you do to stop weeds growing wild in between? And do you wait for weeds to show, then treat or spray some kind of pre-emergent after scalping? So, I'm in the past, traditionally, I haven't used a lot of pre-emergent stuff, and I know that once this buffalo gets going, it's probably going to choke out a lot of the, the smaller sort of weeds. So we're just going to sit back and see what happens. If we need to treat it, I'm going to use a uh, post-emergent spray. But at the moment, I reckon the only thing I've noticed through here at the moment is there's a fair bit of uh, cooch actually under the surface, which is interesting. So... Um, yeah, let's just sit back and see, because once this kicks in, it'll kick on pretty well. And look, if I, as I said, if I have to use a bit of chemical, I'll use a post-emergent control. Um, and yeah, look, at the end of the day, um, don't stress too much. This is a pretty savage renovation, and I'll cover that a little bit more in a minute. Pyra, where? I thought you would have never cut buffalo, or Sir Walter Buffalo, like that ever. Well, I guess it was the only... Uh, only option in this case was it so thick in thatch because the the owner mowed it with no catcher just curious as i was thinking about trying it out okay so this lawn would probably be 12 or 13 years old and in that time it's had a few different owners of this place so it had a few different people looking after it with a few different techniques etc now um i think it's just been a, a combination of a few things obviously 12 or 13 years of never having any real maintenance done it's going to have um have its toll on this sort of a thing. So if we can get into a regular regime next year round, we won't have to do as a savage one as this. Now this was as about as extreme as you'd want to go, um, but it's also a good video, a good educational video to show you guys what is possible if you have to do it. Um, and you saw the video there, the shoots coming through. Yeah, it looks nasty and, and it will look nasty for a little while, but in the long run, it's going to be a much nicer lawn and we'll keep up with this lawn. We'll keep coming back and seeing what it's like and, and checking in from time to time and, and that sort of thing. And then at the end of summer, you can either say, well, that Brenton was a clown, he didn't know what he was on about, or you might turn around and say, wow, that actually worked, and I've got a similar situation, it's just going to bite the bullet and, and hook in and have a go. Um, Rowan, Rowan Clare, we've taken that much off, would you put a soil or top dress for the runners to grow into, especially the bare spots? Also, is aerating a good idea while renovating buffalo? Great questions. Now, in this instance, I haven't worried about top dressing. Now, Generally speaking, buffalo is pretty, pretty much a low maintenance thing, and to, the idea if you bury this stuff, it's you know it's going to push through. But ideally, you don't want to bury buffalo because it's a surface running grass only. It doesn't have any secondary rhizomes to push up through. And um, in this instance, I'm pretty comf pretty confident. What's the word? Pretty comfortable with not top dressing. Uh, look, if you wanted to knock your, knock yourself out and do it, but it's not it's not a hard and fast rule that you've got to aerate, and you've got to top dress, and you've got to do all these sorts of things. Sometimes you only need to do one of those things, and this is an instance where we're just going to shave it right down, get rid of the crap that was there, and let it come through and start again. Now, compaction here is not really an issue. This ground is not compact at all, so you know the average core aeration machine from the highest door goes down about yay far, and look. It's not worth the struggle. It's really not worth the struggle. Um, Nathan Reynolds was looking forward to this one. Please keep us updated with this lawn. Will you also be doing the renovation on your sapphire with a scarifier? Okay, so I did talk about 
in a previous video, I'm going to serify a little section of it just to show you guys what happens when you do. So yes, we're going to do that. I might put Ben Sims behind that because he's due to land here, as I said, in a couple of days' time. I'm going to make him do it so when it doesn't work, I can blame him. No, no, no. But I'm going to, I'm going to do a few square meters yet just to show you guys what happens when you do that and um, it'd be a learning curve for, for a lot of people. I've never scarified buffalo before. I did bring the scarifier here just in case, but it wasn't needed and I didn't use it. Um, are you going to do some aeration and top dress to this lawn next? No, look, I'm not. That's come from Zach J. Uh, no, Zach, look, I'm not going to in this situation. There's no real benefit because obviously uh, this is holding quite well. All the runners that we've got here are biting into the soil well enough as they are. There's no real... Um, this, this lawn's got some general major undulations in it, but not a, it's not going to be corrected by one top dress. So no, in this instance, it's not necessary. Um, but if you want to, you can do it, but there's no hard and fast rule. Um, Brownie 82, so no aeration. So again, no aeration and top dress for Sir Walter. The simple answer again is you can if you wish to. Uh, it's not, not detrimental, and there's a lot of chatter that on, for example, Australian Lawn Fanatics, when someone posts a photo of a, of a, of a struggling yard, and, and everyone just chimes in, core aerate, scarify, top dress. That's not always the answer. They're the three, they're the three big, three big moves in the game, but it's not the only answer. So in this instance, doesn't really need to be. I've top dressed my buffalo at home a couple of times in the past, but there's no real benefit. I've just had excess top dress, so I thought I'll just spread, spread it on there. So you can do it if you want to, but it's not essential. Um, and again. Right at the end, Luke Oath, nice video, Brenton. How come you didn't core it as well? As I said, this lawn personally doesn't have a cord, a, a, a compaction issue or an aeration issue. It was just neglect and um, a few owners and, and droughts and, and recoveries and all that sort of, it just needed a clean up. It just needed, just needed a bit of a makeover as we all do from time to time. Um, and as I said before, the short, um, those, those, those higher machines that you get from the higher stores, most of them, well, the ones around here, are the barrel type that just roll along and as you go, they're not the punch into the ground type ones. Can't think of their name off the top of my head. Um, that's the reason I didn't do it. It's, it's too much, too much effort for for not a lot for not a lot of gain. Not a lot of gain. This you'll be you guys will be amazed at how this will come back. And look, as I said, ten days in and it's coming back really, really well. So give it another month or so, and it'll look fantastic again. It'll almost look like a new lawn, and you save yourself the stress, the heartache, and all that sort of stuff of throwing down sand and rubbing it in and wrestling that coring machine and all that sort of stuff anyway guys i've waffled on long enough and um yeah i hope you've enjoyed today's episode so we've got a fair bit done today and we'll come back and check on this again down the track obviously keep up to date with the uh, tiff dwarf project at home and obviously now you're what you'll be watching this right now well ben and i will be out there renovating the green and my front lawn and we're going to do the the buff fire the buff fire the buff fire the sapphire buffalo as well so you'll be able to see a renovation on a maintained buffalo lawn as well to see how low i go with it and what i do with that anyway guys have a great weekend we'll see you here next time on the aussie lawn